So I'm going to show you a quick debugging session using IntelliJ. The test I'm debugging is written using WebDriver, although the same principles we're going to show could apply directly for Java libraries without any um, browser manipulation. So I've got a test here that I'm going to run it on Firefox. Essentially all it does is it uh, sets a cookie, uses the system, expects the cookie to increment the cookie. And that works fine on Firefox. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run that on Chrome. Now I have a driver class that lets me switch between different browsers easily. And one of the ways that it lets me do that is by adding the browser that I'm going to use as a property. You can see that down here, property, Selenium 2 Basics Web Driver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the run configuration that was automatically created when I just ran that test. Here it is here. And I'm just going to add in, so I've just added in the minus D Selenium 2 Basics Web Driver Chrome, which is going to set up a property, a JVM property for setting Selenium 2 Basics Web Driver to Chrome, so that I can just rerun that test now against Chrome. So let me do that. So I used Chrome as the browser that time, and this time the test has failed. So what I'm going to do is there's a couple of points that I want to check. I want to check that the cookie is created properly, check that the cookie is added properly, and check that the cookies are updated. So I'm going to run the test now in debug mode to hit those breakpoints. Now, what I can do is I can, we know that we can do things like evaluate. So if I do driver.manage, I'm just going to evaluate this. And I can see what that code returns each time. And I can see that currently there's three cookies set up in there. What I'm going to do is rather than evaluate this all the time, I'm just going to add it as a watch. So I'm adding that code in there as a watch. You can see now I'm watching the execution of this code as I go through. So let me just check that this cookie is created. Let's have a look at what this cookie's got. That's a new cookie. Let's compare it with what is currently in here. So that looks good. All of these things seem pretty much the same, same name. Different value, obviously, because we're creating it, but same path, same domain. That all looks good. So now I'm going to go forward a bit. Now we've deleted the cookie, so with my watch, she'd show me that. My watch is showing me that we no longer have this Selenium Simplified Search num visits. So the delete is working. So now let's add the cookie. So that Selenium Simplified Search num visits has been added. Let's just have a quick look at what we've added, and we can see that there's actually a difference. Right, the domain here has got a dot in front of it. The domain that I, of the cookie that I created does not. So somewhere in the process of adding a cookie in through the Chrome web driver, it's adding an extra dot in the domain. Let's see what impact that has on the system. So let's now use the search engine again. You can't see that because it's off the recording. It's done another search, returned back, so now the watch is showing us that we actually have two of these cookies. So the application that we're testing can't find the old cookie or has managed to find it because it's incremented it. When it's updated it, it's not just amended the cookie, it's created a new one. And it's clearly because of this extra dot in the domain. So now what happens is when we try and assert on this to get the cookie named, let's see what happens. Let's get this cookie. So the cookie that comes back is actually the first one. WebDriver has put in the cookie with an extra dot. The application hasn't figured that out correctly. And instead of updating it, has created a new cookie, but has used the value that was there. And when we get the cookie named search num visits, it's actually returned the first one, which is fair enough. There's two with the same name. But we were hoping that it would return this one. The main reason for showing you this is the debug process. Clearly there's a couple of fixes. I could fix the application that I'm testing to handle cookies differently. Uh, I might have to add a workaround in the test for Chrome driver because it works in Firefox, so presumably this is unexpected behavior. I could wait, I could just leave this as a failing test and wait for the web driver to get fixed. In order to do that, I'd probably have to raise a, a bug with the, the web driver team, which I might do. But the main point here is the debug process. Setting up breakpoints, 
using evaluate to see the code that you're working, setting up watches on code is clearly a very powerful debugging approach. So if you haven't tried that, it gives you a lot of visibility into your code execution without having to interrupt it with evaluation all the time.